today we've got a speed review so i'm going to update you on all the makeup i've been testing recently i am so pumped about this video we have got some serious favorites here also always a few duds as always i will have timestamps to every review i'm going to be talking about everything's going to be linked down below i do use affiliate links if you shop through any of those links thank you so much but let's jump straight into the reviews Okay, let's start with this very popular, very buzzed about foundation from REM. This is called their Sweetener Foundation. I wear the shade Light 1N. It's a pretty spot on shade match for me. This retails for $35 and comes in 60 different shades. You saw me testing this out in a recent video. I can leave it linked down below if you want the full like first impression, but I am very much enjoying this foundation. So I'm wearing it today. And I'm kind of surprised. I wasn't anticipating loving this because I do not like their sweetener concealer. And so I was skeptical about the foundation, but it's actually really exceeded my expectations. First of all, I like the price point. $35, it's still high-end, but it's definitely a little bit more approachable than other high-end foundations that mostly sit at 40 and above. They call this a natural matte finish. I would agree with that initially, but I actually think as it wears, it becomes pretty glowy. Even on my dry skin, this does make sense though. The ingredients include uh, hyaluronic acid, also has niacinamide, but REM even says in like the claims that 100% of subjects experienced improved hydration while wearing this. So I find that when I first apply it, it sits pretty matte on my skin, but as the day progresses, I feel like I look pretty glowy. Now I do want to say, just let me throw this out there. It has been ridiculously humid in New York for the last couple of weeks, like so hot in the high 90s, which I believe in Celsius is like, 35 maybe I, i'll pop it on the screen but so i just want you to know the conditions that i have been testing this out in like i've been putting it through it but also would i be that glowy at the end of the day if it wasn't this humid i can't say because i have not had an opportunity to test it on a not humid day but i did want to mention that because i'm not sure it would be a favorite for someone with oily skin i find that this has good longevity it looks natural the coverage i would say is like a light medium but it can be built up without looking heavy i really enjoy the packaging i like how sleek it is though this is plastic not glass whereas i feel like most high-end foundations do come in glass so if that's important to you, I did want to note it. This overall, I have really been enjoying. I've been wearing it pretty much every single day since I got it and I would definitely recommend it. Now it does, I was gonna say come with this brush. This is not an included brush, but this is like the brush pairing that they recommend using it with. And I did wanna give like a brief review of this. This retails for $25, it is the F1 foundation brush. I actually think this applies much better with a sponge than a brush. The dry down time on it is pretty quick, so you don't have a lot of time to let it sit there on the skin. So I find that when I'm trying to blend it out with a brush, that's when I don't get as even of an application. So I actually wouldn't recommend this brush. I would say skip it, especially for $25. I don't think it's a bad brush, but at that price point, I would recommend you go buy like a BK Beauty brush or a Sigma brush. I think those are higher quality than this one. This just can kind of leave me with some streaks. All right, next up are the ever controversial Merit Solo Shadows. I feel like these have been a very polarizing product. <clears throat> I've heard people either love these or they hate these, and I can understand why after testing them for a while. So my verdict, like right from the start, I really like these, but I think a lot of people will hate these. So let me explain my experience and I will try to describe who I think this is good for and who I think should absolutely skip this product. So these are single cream eyeshadows. This retails for $24. So $24 is definitely a little bit steep for one singular shadow. Well, I guess it is on par with a lot of high-end shadows, but it's it's a lot at once for one singular thing, you know? This formula is a bit different than a lot of cream eyeshadows, and I wasn't anticipating that. So what I will say is, first of all, it has a level of sheerness to it, but I kind of like that. I find that it applies pretty easily. It's pretty much error-proof. It blends out with minimal effort, though I will say the blend time like it needs to be quick because once this is set down it's not going to budge but also nothing's going to budge over top of it so i've kind of run into that problem a little bit with this where i will apply it and then try to do eyeliner on top and the way i like to do my eyeliner is i apply it and then use like my fingernail to drag it out 
And I'm kind of unable to do that if I've already applied this first because the eyeliner wants to sit down and stay really stiff on top of this because once this formulation sets, it is quite stiff. So because of that, I would recommend this only if you are looking for a one and done shadow and you're not really doing anything else. Who I do not think this would be good for, someone that's doing something a bit more intricate. So I will even say, I don't even necessarily like pairing these two together. I have the shades Studio, which is more of this like cool toned taupey color. And then I have the shade Social, which is a little bit more of like a desaturated plum, I would say. Today, I do have both of these on. I have the deeper shade more on the outer corner and then the lighter one more on the inner portion of my eye. And you're able to make them work if you do it quickly, but I really don't think that's the ideal use of this product. So I actually wouldn't recommend this product if you're someone that likes any sort of intricate eye look involving more than one shadow. I also don't think this works well as a base. So a lot of single shadows like this, I like to use as a base. I'm thinking of the e.l.f. matte eyeshadows. I like to take that, put that down first, and then maybe throw some other shadows over top. Because of the way that these set down, like I said, they set down really stiff. So it doesn't create a nice surface to blend on top of. I don't recommend these as a base. I only recommend this if you are someone that likes a one and done shadow and you want something simple because this doesn't require you to put down an eyeshadow primer and it actually wears very well without an eyeshadow primer. I get almost zero creasing, though I have gotten creases with this a couple times, but that has only been on the days where it's been like 99 degrees here and like 90% humidity and I have been out the entire day, then I noticed some creasing with these. On like a normal length day where I'm not running around, I don't get any creasing with these. All of that being said, this is very much my style of product. You know that I like something simple on the eyes these days. Most days I just put a bronzer in my crease. So if that is you, I would recommend this to you. But I think a majority of people, especially if you're a big eyeshadow wearer and you like a complex look, you like a lot going on, this will not be your favorite formulation. But as a quick one and done out the door on the way to work, if you want something quick and easy, that's not gonna require you to do two steps. You don't need to put down an eyeshadow primer and then put something over top. Like this is just one quick product, very simplified. They do also have a brush that they recommend using it with that is dual ended. One side um, is more for all over and the opposite side is more of a pencil brush. I like this brush for using it, but I think you could find something in your collection already to use these with. I recommend something with a bit more density to it. Something similar that I don't think is available anymore, but just to give you an idea of shape, I've actually been using them a lot with the e.l.f. Dunkin' Donuts brush. So let me put these right next to each other so you can kind of get a vision. Here they are. If you happen to have the e.l.f. one or something like that, that's definitely what I would recommend. So these are a yes for me personally, but I definitely understand why they've been so polarizing. The Tower 28 Swipe Concealer. I purchased mine in the shade DTLA. This is what I'm wearing today. And this retails for $22. It's been very well loved on the internet. And I like this, but it has not replaced like my top spot concealer. So let me start by saying that I'm wearing it today. I'm actually wearing everything I'm gonna talk about today with the exception of one product. Everything else is on my face. This, I love when it is initially applied, but I do get a pretty significant amount of creasing with this, like more than I get with a lot of other concealers. So. That is a bit of a downside for me. I feel like I kind of have to like go in and tap it out throughout the day. That's not the end of the world, but it is noteworthy, especially depending on the surface of your under eyes. If you have a lot of creases there naturally, just with like the way your face moves, you might not enjoy this. And that even is after I have set it down. Coverage on this, I would describe as medium buildable. I think it does have a really nice level of coverage even on with like just one small swipe of product. I think you can cover a lot up. Uh, consistency of this. It is a little bit more serum-y like. I find that it has a radiant finish, but not too glowy. I actually, I would hesitate on uh, it is radiant, but I don't want that to scare you off because in general, I don't personally tend to prefer a very radiant finish from a concealer. Sometimes I find that they make my under eyes look worse because that glow can emphasize any texture that I have already. I'm thinking of the Say Hydra Beam, with that one, for me, I found too glowy. It actually made my under eyes look worse. 
This I think has a really nice level of glow to it where they look hydrated and alive and skin like, but there's still a smoothing property to it that leaves them looking very blurred. But what I will say, it actually reminds me a lot of the Flower Beauty Get Real Serum Concealer, which is my number one favorite concealer at the drugstore. And this one retails for $12 compared to $22. So if you were wanting something similar, I would actually direct you to this if you wanted to save a little bit of money. Not that I think this is bad, but I actually like the Flower Beauty one a little bit more and it is a lower price point. They're definitely not dupes, but I think they're comparable products for sure in terms of coverage level and finish, but I don't really get much creasing with this and I get a good amount with this one. My top spot concealer still is the Natasha Dona concealer. That being said, that one is $30 versus this one at $22. Oh, I did just get an affiliate code with Natasha Denona. So uh, it is just my name. I'll pop the affiliate code on the screen if you are shopping on the site. That one for me is still the top spot, though I do like this. I do see myself wearing it often. I like the price point of it, but I just don't like that it creases. And don't get me wrong, I think all concealers crease. When people say, oh, this doesn't crease, I, I don't understand that. I don't know if they're just, their under eyes don't move as much. Like it really depends on your face shape, but I've never found a concealer that doesn't crease at all. But I will say I get more creasing out of the Tower 28 one than I do my other favorites. Moving on to the Drunk Elephant Be Goldie Drops. So these are highlighter drops. This includes 5% niacinamide, so it's supposed to be kind of a skincare makeup hybrid. I would say this, like right off the bat, is very similar to this style of product. So if you have any of the above, you could probably skip this. Similar to the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter, similar to the Iconic London Radiance Booster, or the e.l.f. Halo Glow. They're all kind of like one and the same for me. The difference is these three that I just mentioned all come in multiple skin tones. The uh, De Bronzy, no, I'm getting confused. That's the bronzer one. The, De Go the B Goldie. What are these names? The B Goldie is only one singular shade. So that's the difference. But I do find this has a nice level of sheerness to it where I would imagine it would be adaptable to a lot of uh, different skin tones. That being said, definitely take that with a grain of salt because I have fair skin. It is definitely a lighter tone. So there is a possibility that it might leave a cast on a deeper skin tone. The nice thing about this compared to these ones, this definitely has more skincare properties to it. So if that's something that is important to you, you might prefer this. Also though, the price point of this is a bit less than the other ones, obviously aside from the e.l.f., but you're getting one ounce of product here. It's also one ounce with Charlotte Tilbury and Iconic London. And the Iconic London option is $39, Charlotte Tilbury is $49. I did do comparison swatches on my hand. I, I shared them in sunlight so you could kind of see them side by side. What I will say is the Be Goldie, I notice after I've applied it to my skin, if I go and look at my fingertips, I can see some little micro glitter particles. I do not personally notice them on my cheeks. I just see them like as our remnants on my hand. That being said, they are there, they do exist. I just don't notice them on the skin. You know what I mean? There are some types of glowy primers like this where I can absolutely see the glitter particles on the skin. I'm thinking of the one from Keys Soul Care. That one for me, I could just see the glitter. I don't notice it with this. I also like that the formulation of this is incredibly thin. So I really enjoy mixing this in with foundations, especially ones that are a bit more thick or heavy. I'm thinking of my NYX Bear With Me Blur. That one can sometimes be too heavy drying and matte on me. When I mix it in with this, it looks so nice. Compared to the other illuminators that I mentioned though, this I would say has less of a glow. So I think it's better for wearing on its own. If you found any of the other ones that I mentioned look too glowy to wear on their own without foundation over top, you might like this. I think this one looks better on its own, but because the glow is not as intense, I, I would only put this under a sheer to light coverage foundation. So if you apply this and try to put even a medium coverage foundation on top, there's gonna be no point because this isn't like super mega glowy. You know what I'm saying? If you are wearing a medium to full coverage foundation and you're wanting the glow, I wouldn't put this beneath. I would actually mix it in with the foundation. All of that in mind, I like this. This type of glowy product isn't my personal favorite, so I don't know that I'll get the most use out of it. I think if you have any of these already, you could probably skip this, but I do think it's a good product. And if you wanted a glowy type of product, like multi-use thing like this, 
that also had skincare benefits, I actually probably would recommend it over these other ones. That being said, it's really gonna come down to preference. So like what's important to you, make the decision based on that. Something that I don't like, but I think a lot of people would, is going to be this brow gel from Jones Road. So this is called the brow gel. Most of their products are just called like the blush, the eyeshadow, the brow gel. Makes it nice and easy. I have mine in the shade Ash slash Blonde. I do like this. I find that it is a good undertone for a brow gel. A lot of times, blonde shades and brow gels can pull very warm and they almost make me look like I have like red eyebrows. I really like the undertone of this. It's perfect. What I don't enjoy about this is the giant spoolie. I just find it's a little bit unusable for me because I have thin, sparse eyebrows. That being said, I could see this being very well loved by someone that has really thick eyebrows. If you have super beautiful full eyebrows, first of all, I'm jealous, but I think this would probably be a really well loved product by you. If you just want a little bit of shaping and you wanna maybe fill in some sparse spots with a little bit of a tint, you will probably love this because it has a nice hold to it. The reason I don't like this is because I, okay, even today, I'm wearing this today and I feel like I went a little bit thicker and more bold with my brows than normal, but typically I prefer a very thin brow look on myself and it is almost impossible for me to achieve that with this spoolie. It's kind of a unique spoolie. It is big, but it has this like one side where the bristles stick out more. So in theory, it should be nice to comb through it. And I would imagine someone with thick brows would enjoy it for that. But if you are like myself and you have very few eyebrow hairs to begin with, and then the shape they're in already is thin, you're just gonna get this all over your skin. Like that's what I run into. When I try to apply it, I get so much on my skin. I have not applied this a single time where I haven't gotten some on my skin. Like every single time I have to like get in there and take it off. So I don't think I'm the target audience for this, but if you have beautiful, thick, luscious brows and you just want a little bit of a tinted brow gel to give you some hold, you'll probably enjoy this. It's a bit pricey at $24. I would say if you want an alternative to this, I would actually recommend the, let me grab it. Okay, here it is. This is from Essence, the Thick and Wow Brow Gel. Uh, similar spoolie sizing on this, similar level of like tint. I would say the hold on the Essence one is a little bit more of a soft hold, whereas the Jones Road one, like it's pretty, it's gonna be pretty stuck in place. Like those aren't gonna be moving around, but if you wanted a similar product at like a fraction of the price from the drugstore, if you're like, I can't imagine spending $24 on a brow gel, try this one. I don't think this is bad, I just don't think it's for me. A bonus, a first impression, this is not a review, but a first impression, I just tried these today. The new lip liners from Jones Road, these were just announced. I got them a little bit early before the announcement was made, but today I'm wearing a combination of the shades mauve and nude rose i i have to get back to you like i said this is my first impression you know take this with a grain of salt but i am whoo i'm really liking these you know i'm such a lip liner girly and for being a wooden pencil this is incredibly creamy but not too creamy i find a lot of times high-end lip liners are too creamy for me where i have no control over them this i feel like is the perfect middle point um, if you're familiar with the NYX lip liners that I love so much and rave about every second of the day, the like $5 wooden pencil ones, this is uh, not quite as stiff as those. Those are a little bit stiff. They can feel a little bit dry. This feels so creamy on my lips. Sometimes lip liner can leave my lips feeling dry. These don't. I, I put this on like, mm, at this point, I guess an hour, two hours ago, and my lips still feel so hydrated, but I don't find them too creamy where I can't get a nice sharp lip line. So I have very, very, very high hopes for these. So far, I'm loving them. I'm not normally a high end lip liner person. I feel like you don't need to spend this much on a lip liner. You can normally find one between like two and six dollars. That's pretty great. But if you wanted to splurge, so far I'm loving these. But let's talk drugstore. This is the Essence Stay and Play Gel Eyeliner. This retails for $5. Most of their other eyeliners are around like two to three, so this one's definitely, like compared to those, it's a lot more, but I think you're getting a lot more. This is a very good eyeliner. So this comes in a lot of shades, but the one I've been wearing every single day, I am not kidding, every single day since I got it is the shade two, but first espresso. So this is one of the best eyeliner formulas I've found. I cannot recommend this highly enough because it is so blendable until it's not. 
So what I've been doing is, this is perfect for making a winged liner, especially if you can't make a wing, by this pencil. So I just do just like a little dot at the edge of my eye and then I take my nail and I just drag it out and the formulation of this allows it to just glide across the skin like that and give you the most perfect sharp wing and then give it a few minutes and once it's set down, it's not going to budge. I was wearing this when I went on my trip recently in Paris. I was wearing this like every day and those days I was out and about. It was raining, it was humid. And I kept thinking like, oh, I know I'm gonna look in a mirror and just have so much like smudging down here. No, none at all. And this is $5. I will say, I think this is better suited to the skin versus the waterline. I don't get the same amount of longevity if I'm applying it like here in the waterline. I find that if you put it on skin, this sounds like a weird description, but like the skin of your eye, you know? Um, that's when it has the ability to really set down. This comes in a ton of shades. They've got purple, they've obviously got like black, they've got, they also do have like white and like a beigey nude shade, but I think those would be better suited to the waterline. And like I said, I don't think these like fully last the best in the waterline, so I will note that. I think this is best used for like eyeliner on the lash line. And the most expensive product to review today is the lip treatment from Dr. Dennis Gross. This retails for $45. This is called the Plump and Repair Lip Treatment. So kind of like it's some funky packaging. They call it a lip treatment. I would call this a lip plumper. So if you're familiar with like the Too Faced lip injections or even Nabla Lip Viper, I would say it's almost on that level in terms of plumping ability, but slightly less tingly than those. Those two I find pretty painful, but that's the thing about like lip plumping products like this. To actually plump up the lips, they have to cause like physical pain because they have to irritate the lips enough to basically cause a reaction for the lips to swell. So I know that alone turns so many people off from uh, like lip plumpers, which is completely valid. And I do want to describe it in that way because if that's what you don't like, I would skip this product. I don't find the tingling to be as unbearable as the others. Like the Nabla one, that one will have me like crying. This one I find still gives me a nice plump, but it doesn't, it's not as irritating. And the issue I would run into, especially with the Nabla one is like, I feel like around my lips would look so red. And yeah, it would be plumped up, but like even the area around them would look red. So it just never looked nice, even though the lips were plumped. This gives this like really nice pink finish to my lips because again, it's kind of irritating them to plump it up. But I do think they look very plumped. I, I put up a short that I posted, or actually it was a reel. Actually, I posted on shorts. I think I posted it everywhere. You might've seen this video already, but I will share the demo clip for you. They say this is supposed to be nice for hydration, especially like days later, you're supposed to still have that hydration from your lips. And I find that it's a lot more effective at that than other lip plumpers. Like. A lot of times, even just lip glosses will naturally just kind of dry your lips out a little bit, especially depending on the formula. This one, I don't find my lips feel chapped afterwards, even though it is a plumping product. So the cost of this is pretty high. I, I could see it not being for everyone because it is a little bit painful, but I do notice really nice results with this and it doesn't dry out my lips the way a lot of other lip plumpers can. So it's not gonna be for everyone, but you might like it. So that was... Those are my thoughts on everything. I hope this video was really helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I will go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.